there underlying political motivations behind the insecurity we face in Nigeria? Is there enough manpower and technology to ensure the safety of Nigerians? All the money from Nigeria's budget allocated to security, is it being used properly? What are we getting wrong in this insecurity fight? Hello and welcome to Political Paradigm on Channels Television. I'm Kayla Megwa. My guest on the program today is Sir Mike Okiro, Inspector General of Police from 2007 to 2009. He's fondly called the Agune Chemba One of Egbema and Nigeria's first ethnic Igbo to assume the post of Police Inspector General, an English language graduate from the University of Ibadan, a Master of Public Administration from the University of Lagos, and an LLB and LLM from the University of Jos. He is also an alumnus of the prestigious National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, Kuru, in Plateau State. Sir Michael Kiro, welcome to Political Paradigm. Thank you very much. So good to see you again. Thank you. How are you coping with things? I mean, everyone is talking about the economy and what every Nigerian is going through right now, even though there are many cases in court, you know, we're still seeing a lot of, a lot of ripple effects of the policies of government uh, since this government assumed office. How are you looking at things right now? Well, um, to start with Ameritari, so I depend on my pension, but I don't depend fully on your pension. Okay, if you depend fully on your pension, you can't eat. You can't even buy diesel for a generator. You have to do other things to keep, to make it both ends meet. Uh, the issue of um, the economy is really very bad. Nigerians are suffering. And uh, talk of minimum wage, somebody is being paid 30,000 a month. That might not be enough for him for, for transportation. Not talk of other things. So a lot of Nigerians are really suffering. So I think government should do something about it. There's, uh, just to get your thoughts on you know some of the things that people are asking should be done about it. We saw Mr. Femi Falana recently, uh, you know, approaching that high court in Lagos, asking that they put a fixed price on goods. Is that something that you think can can work? <laughs> it can work. It can't work. Yes, because uh, I know government a uh, lot of things. I remember in the seventies, early seventies. Government brought price control. It didn't work. Mid 70s, they brought another program. It didn't, it's difficult to work. It's Many of us were not here at the time. Yeah, yeah, we're not here. So, so let's yeah. give us so, an so, idea so, of so, how so, that worked. Go, what go, happened? Government then? brought price control and fit the price on every item. It didn't work. Because uh, you, you go to the market, the buy something 5,000 today, you go tomorrow to 6,000. And that's the 10,000. So that, really, the market forces have to decide the price of commodities, not human beings. We, at that time, we even manufacturing, not that we import. You can't feel the price of an IT you import from China. You can't feel the price in China. Neither can you can feel it in Nigeria. But by the time it goes, you have, you have to pay for the price because item there, pay for cost of duty, pay for freight. Of course, most more profit. So there's no way government can really, unless government manufacturers see themselves and fit the price. They cannot fit the price for a commodity manufactured by somebody else. So it cannot work. At the time when it was implemented in the 70s, what was that like? What was the experience uh, it for went, the Nigerian? It went through a little bit that day. It haywire. People, people started holding those items. So if you're looking for an item, very important, a commodity that is essential, for life, we use the example of 5,000 naira. And government says it must be 5,000. The man says it says, I cannot say 5,000. If you want to see that, I can send it to you. If you want 5,000, go and buy from government. It happened. People we have to go outside the price control to buy things they needed. So, whether the government premium for just something is safe, they cannot fix the price control. So let's talk a bit about security. That's uh, another issue that a lot of people have been talking about, especially coming from the police. We've heard, we, we get briefings from the military, from the defense headquarters. Oh, this is, this is what we've done, this is what we've done with the police. We see a lot of, you know, parading of suspects. And then, of course, from time to time, they brief on successes. 
Talk to us a bit about policing in the era that we are in. Are we doing it right? <sighs> We're not. Yeah, because in the modern world, we're not talking about 70s or 60s or 50s. The society is growing. The society is a dynamic. As society is dynamic, so crime is dynamic. Criminals they call it dynamic. They change their, their methods. So police cannot de 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 decide and maintain the same methods that apply those years today. Because crime, crime has got digital. You have cyber crime, have everything now. So government and the police security agencies have to brace up and face the challenges which are coming up, which are being, being, being brought about by criminals and criminality. So we're not doing enough now in Nigeria because the police are not well equipped, not to police security agencies are not well equipped. Even there's no manpower. So, so in, the, in the absence of manpower and technology, you can't succeed the police in a society like Nigeria, so vast, with diverse uh, um, methods of criminality. It's difficult. So for police and security agencies to succeed, they must be ahead of the criminals themselves. With the insecurity that we started facing, especially in the nation's capital, we saw the creation of a special intervention squad by the Inspector General of Police. What do you make of this intervention squad uh, and, and, and the way that we are doing policing in Nigeria. Yeah, that intervention squad is a good innovation. That, uh, you see, like, there's a, there's a problem. The diversity of tackling that problem. That was what I just done. The problem in the city is one that is unexpected. Because we're having some sides and people programming, okay, let's have it outside. It has now come to a doorstep. Not to it'll be a bedroom, it's really a bedroom. So the government, it's pretty IG. What it's done is good to create this squad. But that, that should not be really created the squad. They should go to beyond it. Because uh, you create a squad, you have to train them in adequately and properly, equip them properly. It's not enough to say I create a squad. The squad becomes uh, incompetent, powerless, because they have what to tell to do the job for which they're appointed. So I, 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 I pray the IG for taking that bold step. We had to go a bit further to make sure they are given special training so that they can compete with the armed robbers, with the criminals, kidnappers, and be ahead of them. If we're beginning to have Amotekun in this part of the country, we're seeing, we're seeing Zamfara with the new one. We're seeing people are coming up with their own special security forces, so to speak. Why not do state policing in full? What's the danger? And what are your thoughts on these, um, these other security agencies that have been created across the country? Um, I'm not an advocate of state police because I believe it on hindsight. State police... Before, I uh, had, had regional police in those days. Before the Gong government came in and brought military police in the early 70s. And because of the abuse that the police were subjected to in those days. The police were being used by politicians to drive away the opponents or the opposition. So that was what made the government of General Gawan to have military police. What I'm advocating now yeah, because it looks like the city police has even failed. I'm advocating regional police. Have, regional police? Yes. So now you have to see, you have to see duplica zones in Nigeria. Okay. You can have six duplica police forces in Nigeria now. If what I'm advocating. So that each zone, let's say, for example, North Central, North Central now. In North Central, you have a DIG in charge. The, 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 the police officers are recruited from among the states in the North Central. But not to work, they're not, they're not to work in the old states. For example, somebody uh, recruited from Tansawa, we put it to Plateau or Benue, something like that, you know. So that, now because Nigeria is not like advanced countries, Britain, America, and so on and so forth. We are, uh, have a nuclear family. Nigeria 
you have uh, people who, who belong to a family, and it's in the family, so to say. That if you are doing anything, you have influence from outside, in the village. If you are a police village, a police officer in Nigeria, police a village cannot work. Because you're going to get influence from members of the family. Talking about hindsight, you, in the case of, uh, of Yamu and Danini in the mid, mid 80s, is the case in point. Iyamu, a DSP, will charge of what's instead of, of uh, Amra Bre, uh, anti Amra Bre squad in, 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 in the old Bender. And then he, who was an Arab, was his cousin. They were protecting him. So that's what made the IG then say people to put out of the states. So what I'm advocating is the journal, one of the journal police who have a DIG in charge. And people are recruited from within the zone, within the, then posted to other states. And it has a, a lot of advantages. For example, what you have now, you can get a police officer from, say, Sokoto, posted to, to, to Yenegua, cannot swim, cannot understand, understand the language, he doesn't know the culture, so he cannot perform well. So if you are posted within the zone, you know the language and the culture, even the geography, even the temperature, everything is tempting. So, so Nigerians, Nigeria police is more effective if you have this uh, Jubrika zone. And then also, I wrote a paper on this some time ago. I said, within this zone, the DIG can promote people within the zone up to AC. Or even CP. Once they're up to CP, they cannot go outside. That that to show that it's Nigeria police force. What what are, where do they get paid from? Okay, the federal government pays them. So that makes it unitary. The federal government pays them because if you allow states to pay, there are some states that do not can't even pay their teachers or civil servants. Those states cannot open it for they cannot open this salary for a month. That be chaos. You know, you've championed a lot of police trainings, even around the world. I've, I've watched you go for some trainings, uh, you know, talking about s standard policing in the modern age. Can you talk to us a bit about that and, and how we can incorporate some of these, you know, these skills in our police force here? Yeah, I, I, I'm an advocate of uh, police training. Yeah, because when I was IG, I found that policemen are going to training. Well, understandable. Uh, because police have the money to send them on training. And uh, they're supposed to be, when somebody going on training, we're going to be passage, transport, to go and flow, allowances, feeding, and so on and so forth. But police have that money, so they're not going for training. You can imagine a situation where things are changing, and the police officer or somebody working somewhere, they're not go on training, no in service training. So it is it's the old method of doing things. So I looked at it and I said, no, we cannot work like this. We don't have the money. So what I did was to, at to attach training to promotion. I said, before you are posted to a certain rank, you must attain a certain training. So I then put it put to, I said, so, so people are going to promote a so, so period that must go on training. So if you don't go, if you don't want promotion, they don't go for training. We don't care that we can go for training. We don't even care about allowances any longer. So with that, I will send people for training. I created so many trainings, so many pro proposals for people to, to, to carry on before they're promoted. And that was what I did to ensure the police were being trained. Yeah, because uh, for, for somebody to be effective in a job, one is the equipment to training, the motivation. If you know these things are lacking, the person can never be effective in what you're doing. I made sure that the training took place, and it took place when I was there. When it comes to corruption in the police force, how, how, would, you, how would you view the situation right now? Is it better? We're seeing a lot of policemen around the country being tried 
at least now with the with the advent of social media, people film quite a bit. So whenever a policeman is behaving badly, and we have, to the credit of the Nigerian police force, seen the IG take action on policemen who are caught being derelict in their duties or doing acts of corruption or collecting bribery. Talk to us a bit about this epidemic. Many people say the reason why we see a lot of policemen in these situations is because they're not being paid well. Where do they live? Mm -hmm. A policeman who's coming to take care of Asokoro is probably coming to work from Suleja. Talk to us a bit about this situation. Yeah, it is it's very sad. Um, the record of the Nigerian police force is really below standard. They're not equipped. They're not well trained. They're not motivated. Yeah, policeman, police officer who has no know how to. Just mentioned somebody working as a circle, right? Coming from Sledge. So if you can go beyond that, where they can afford accommodation. But they can't afford accommodation in a in a in a Sulele. It's in, uh, in a circle. It's impossible. You have to go far. But they can get accommodation. And they go from there to work every day. They spend how much money they spend on transportation every day. Not talk of other things they have to do to keep themselves good. But, but they probably not only to the police, the entire society. So, so the issue of corruption should not be leveled against the police. The police is supposed to fight crime. And corruption, bribery is crime. So the police is not supposed to indulge in that act. It's supposed to fight. So there are two ways to eat. If you feel the heat in the kitchen is too much, you get out of it. If you cannot live with what they're being paid the police, they resign and go. But if you have to be a police officer, do the job, you must keep the rules of the country. You must not, you must not indulge in those things that are criminal in nature, like corruption, bribery, and so on so forth. So, so it is wrong for any police officer to get involved. So I support the IG for the movies taken. And unfortunately, I think uh, we're really going down, 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 down. You have, you have a, a squad in those days. Escort made police popular in those days. And I, I said something like the police was the only agency at that time who could arrest their own staff, police officer. If it's get him. And prosecutor and jail him for taking bribe. It was so before. They had escort. But after that when I was IG, the escort was already there, almost dead. Yeah, because I had only escort in police force headquarters. How could they leave from Abuja to Sokoto to go and effect an arrest? No money to, to pay them for transport. So what I did was to digitalize escort. I think of police to create, create escort in their own commands. So they were able to handle air, air, air police officers within the command. Because that's quite a different history. But if in those days, like police officers collect money from roadblocks, you see some escort people would say that they are not, they are not taxi drivers. And other police officers are doing that. But no, they don't do it. Because they are not escort. So the problem is that it's actually uh, so much. Find out the police. When experience, I don't, I don't think it has changed. In those days, there be a police budget. There be a budget, budget for the police. Sometimes they get up to 50% of what in the budget. Sometimes get up to the no cash back in. So, so what the police gets doesn't come to them 100%. Why? It's a budget. It's called budget, but it's just something. You may budget something for maybe you don't get 100% of what you what to ask him for. So that's the problem. At least I don't know if I get, but I think Nigeria has not changed much. I'm sure what the IG is not getting what's held on the budget. So it's handicapped. You cannot do everything. But no security. The police is the lead agency in internal security. 
and the body not implemented. And what did he do? He just, uh, just uh, said to take Israel and relax. When it comes to border control, what kind of roles can we play? Well, we, we've identified what the issue is, you know, this lack of funding. But as it is right now, Nigerians, especially people who live in the nation's capital, need to have a sense of security. Definitely. What can they be doing right now? There's a special intervention squad that has been put in place. We have heard promises of more technology. But what else can be done, you know, to ensure that these borders are well protected so we don't have the influx of terrorists and bandits? Whenever there's insecurity in Niger, Abuja is next. Whenever there's in Kaduna, Abuja is next. How, how, do we, how do we keep our borders safe here while trying to solve the problems, of course, in those states? I look at that as a, a magnanimous problem in the sense that Abuja is the capital of Nigeria, surrounded by Nigerian states. So you cannot stop somebody from Niger from coming to Abuja. I can stop people from Nasa from coming to Abuja. It's a, they move the Tamengo. So, and it and can't create a block. It can't create a block on major ways. Other ways that these people can come in. So what you just need is uh, more training and concerted effort, both in the part of uh, in Abuja, in fact, in fact, on the part of every Nigerian. Whether you live in Abuja or not, you are a Nigerian. So you must try and give information to the police to, to agencies. What you see within your vicinity, enable the fight crime. But if you just see a criminal and keep quiet, well, the criminal may attack Mr. A today. Then they will be at all like my police to say, they prove my place. The, the bush fowl, the, 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 the home fowl, and the bush fowl. The hunter to go and kill the bush fowl every day. So when they come, the bush fowl, oh, look at you, see, see, it ties when he said, see his neck. I said, one day, the hunter will not see me to kill you, to stab and entertain his friends. So if, uh, if a criminal is attacking Mr. A, you keep quiet. And one day it will be a turn. So what I'm saying, Nigerians must take it as a, responsibility, a patriotic responsibility to ensure that criminals are reported to the police or to security agencies who take action. To, avoid, to have this uh, repeat action of criminality going on every day. So I'm talking about the cities or states of Abuja. It's not allow some people come and sit in Abuja, go, go somewhere in Kifi to go and dispose of them. One day they attack Kifi also. So Nigerians should have that sense of patriotism. You know that. Um, what happened to Mr. A today can happen to Mr. B any day. So they work together. Let's talk a bit about political motivations behind these attacks because it's, it's almost impossible for us to be talking about the insecurity that we're facing without looking at the fact that there may be hands behind this. In your view, as former Inspector General of Police, do you think that insecurity may have political motivations and in what ways? And did you have any of such experiences? I don't think the insecurity now has political motivation. What well, you could have, only somebody is arrested and it gives uh, who are the sponsors and why, why they're doing what they're doing. Otherwise, we take it as ultra criminality. We presume it's a kind of criminality on the, the suspects, they us on the wives. So, I, I really don't believe he's criminal, but what a political motivation. What, what would somebody gain? Destabilize the country to push political agenda. Well, it could be, it may not be. But uh, there's no evidence to that effect now. What do you think it is? You think it's economic? Criminality. It's, it's outright criminality. Outright criminality. Because people are people, we have jobs. Like, uh, I know, like I mentioned to you, somebody we need 30,000 living somewhere uh, off Sledge. The money is not even enough for him for transport. Someone, someone has told me, not, not coming to work again. They say, oh, I'm not, the money is not even enough for me to go to, 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 go to work. 
Let me cook stay at home. So some people now begin to climb. Look at you, drive a car, they think you are the problem. They attack you. For years, we've seen that idea of who the policeman is be bashed by all sorts of things. Talk to us as former Inspector General of Police. What is the ideal policeman? What kind of job should he be doing? How many people should he be looking out for? What would make him ideal in Nigeria? Yeah, I don't talk about Nigeria. You talk of about a D policeman. You don't have a D policeman. You have a D society. Society, or rather, the policeman is a reflection of society. Society is a D. The police will be a D. Society is lawless. The police officer will be lawless. Society is, uh, is uh, given to crime. But you know how to tackle the crime too. You know, if it's a violent crime, you go to full of that crime with violence. So you can see the police officer who is talking to talk about criminality is a reflection of the site. So Nigeria, um, the police officers from Nigeria and the police officers in Nigeria are not from South Africa. They're not from Sudan. Not from America. They're from the moon. The children and daughters of Nigerians. Married to Nigerians. Have Nigerian children. Who attend Nigerian school, Nigerian market, everything Nigerian. So it cannot be too far away from the from the um, attitude and conduct of Nigerians. Uh -huh. What's the training and moral moral bringing? Yes, there is it's, a moral is standard to which a policeman is being held de up. Definitely, to. definitely. Like I said earlier, on, if you feel you can't get, then leave. Then leave. You can't demand a policeman and do what you're supposed to do. Supposed to do. Then leave. Let that life will come in. You know, you mentioned you, you talked about regional policing earlier. Uh, but you, you didn't speak, you didn't answer my question about all these Amuteku and okay, yeah, local okay. police. Oh, you, you can understand what I'm talking about. Amuteku does not belong to a state. It's Southwest. So, in fact, uh, uh, that is an, uh, an answer to what I'm talking about. Amuteku is not to Southwest. Oh, the one in Zanfar. The Zanfar, they call it, um, the, the one in the, in the, in the, in the Southeast, uh, Bago. It's all the, 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 the Southeast. So they're effective. So I'm talking about getting not one, one, one police for state, get the regional police to, to vast the entire... Amoteco is paid by the, by the governors of the region. Yes. But in your model, though, it will be different. So yeah, my, my, my model will be different. My model will be different. My, my model will be paid by federal government, but policed by people in the region. What do you make and of... All, and also equipped by the governors. I because found out, uh, uh, when I was a commercial polygos, I went to the, I'll use that as an example. Commercial polygos, uh, they were giving me 250,000 naira a month for a quarter to maintain police vehicles. And that, that money could you buy an engine. I told the governor. I said, you are the chief secretary of the state. If there are no security in Lagos, People will not come to visit in Lagos. And for me, I'm a commercial police. Maybe two, three more for me when you are put out of Lagos, but you are here. So you must make sure that to go to Lagos. So people come and reverse in Lagos. And I tell you what I, I gave me a shop list. A shop list of what I wanted. He gave to me. I was able to put vehicles and they could the police and so on and so forth. So what I'm talking about. If you have the, the zonal police, we pay the federal government equipped by the states. That, that's the very fact that was, I got that model from, uh, from Canada, the Canadian model. The people, the, whatever they buy, remains in the states. The police officer could put it from, from Lagos to mm. Oyo, or Oyo to, to uh, Ugo State, like that. Paid by federal government. 
Well, that would be such great motivation if if I know as a police officer that the tools I need to do my job are available yes. in Lagos. I would be excited to be posted to Lagos to work. When you hear, we've heard this many times, when, when you hear people in government, even some state governors, telling people you have to arm yourself, you have to protect yourself. What, what do you make of those sorts of statements? Is there some reality to it that we're probably not looking at? That shows failure of government. If the officials of a state can they put arm themselves, it is done the constitution, the proper constitution, security of the citizens, the responsibility of the government. Security, the responsibility of government. So if somebody, a governor, somebody says, I'm yourself, I mean, the governor has accepted failure. Because that's, they have gone outside the, the, the precincts of the constitution. So, uh, in respect of government, to provide security for everybody in that country, especially Nigeria. So, um, that was said, if government says, I'm yourself, I failed. And the government has failed. Let's talk a bit about collaborations between all the security agencies. We see joint operations, especially in times of emergency, which many people are calling the era that we are in. How do you look at the collaborations between, you know, all the forces now and how it was at a time when you were IG? And what can be done to see them better integrated? I'll give you a typical example. Yeah. We, when the slogan, no grief for anybody, came out, the police said, no, don't say that. It is heating up the polity. It's making people aggressive. But we saw other agencies saying, no grief for anybody, especially kidnappers and terrorists and bandits. And it made it look like there's some kind of, you know, clash of, you know, ideologies. Let's talk a bit about that synergy. Is it better now or is it worse than when... You were IG of police. Uh, let me start from no grief for anybody. I think it's a matter of semantics. If an agency says no grief for anybody, uh, no grief for Kinaba, of course, not, not, we would, we would, if Kinaba, Kinaba say enter moto, will you enter? No grief. If, 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 if kidnappers or criminals say do this, no grief. We don't do, so we'll do it. So they're right in that. What police says, uh, that's Logan, no grief for anybody. It's bad. It's bad. It means that if, if, if your, your husband tells you to do this, I will agree. I mean, it, it, it means that you have to look at it and see the scenario and the, 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 the situation where that phrase is to be used or not to be used. It's not, it's not a general term that, oh, no grief for anybody. Don't talk to anybody, say don't, no. Or grief for somebody. It depends on what happens. But it's not a situation where uh, no grief for anybody. It means that the law, I would agree. No, it doesn't follow. You must, must, must adopt the law, you must obey the law. The law of the country must obey. If, if, the, if there's, a, if there's a, 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 a sign one way, you say, I would agree, I've done that, no agree, go against one way. No, it's wrong. So it depends on people understand that phrase, no grief for anybody. Now, for synergy amongst the agencies, I think that's improved now. That's improved. Well, we did my own time, it wasn't there at all. That's, uh, it was like a, a competition of uh, a success or, or, or a claim among security agencies. And, and I remember I presented a paper to National Security Advisor at that time where I said um, this intelligence rivalry should stop yeah, because the security agencies have one aim to provide security for Nigeria. The, you might adopt different methods, we have one aim. Training, training is basically the same thing. Little different color of uniform. And how those trainings have been adopted and implemented. And I give an example that time. I said that if this energy and most of the agencies, if we really want to succeed, it provides security for Nigerian Nigerians. I said, 
a situation where it, where the uh, the um, the SS operator in Mubi gets an information, it passes on to the director in the state, who takes it on to the, the, the general in uh, Abuja here, who now writes an essay, and they say inform the IG, IG passes the section in charge of it, that section now informs the CP. For example, informs the DP movie. The, 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 the have been done. The criminal cannot wait for one week or two weeks for this letter to go up and down. I said the best way to do it. If that operative it would be get that information, a part of the TPO, they should work together. They can now inform the director. We now inform the contact. This is what we did, this is what the information, this is what we have done. If they need help from Abuja, they can ask for help from Abuja. Not for the GPU in Mubi to be, uh, to be uh, left in darkness while the crime is going on. So this energy is very, very important. And it's, 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 I think it's working well now, but working better than when I was IG. Because many, many people may not agree with you because re recently we saw a situation in Abuja here where it felt like the police was rescuing somebody from the DSS. And we hear about these clashes between the agencies from time to time. <laughs> when you say it's better, how bad was it back in the day? To do to make it better, which I suggested that time, I tried to do it. Was that among the top children of the agencies, there's cooperation, there's friendliness, there's camaraderie. But down the bladder, there's a problem. The corporal in the army and the... the the, the, the sergeant of corporate and the police, they, they, they seem as rivals. But it should be so. So what I did that time, we, say, uh, we, call it, uh, we had the thing in Zafara, I can't remember where it was. We organized uh, lecture, conferences, for the security agency together. So the corporal and the army, we see sergeant and inspector and the police, they know we are, we are together, we have the same, we have the same cause, you know? We have the same um, focus. We can work together. The two, if they happen to do this, do that. but when people at the top of children are, are cooperating, there are no cooperation downstairs. That's a problem. So they need to have intelligence conferences, seminars, symposia, that they may will interact and know themselves. That if if, uh, if, uh, if a sergeant dummy has met uh, a sergeant the police, they change hands during the, during the, the conference, then a person they meet. Oh, uh, they're friends, they know themselves. So, uh, 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 it started working. We, we did that, uh, maybe that's what we have now. Normal and periodic interface among the security agencies. I want to talk to you about something that we've still seen recently. Just so people can understand, when people want to protest a situation and they want to go on the streets to protest, there's always the feeling that the police is against protest. Oh, we, is it a real protest if I have to take permission from the police? Just so people can understand that dynamic, because a lot of people we're seeing now, a lot of people coming out to protest the economic situation of things. How does it really work, you know, when it comes to policing protests? And, and what should citizens know about that dynamic? Now, there's something called the Public Order Act. We are, before you go to demonstration, you must get approval from the police. But somewhere along the line, I think, I uh, can't remember again, I think one court in somewhere in uh, Kwara, somewhere in Kwara, gave a... Uh, an order that people can, people can demonstrate without police approval. Well, you could give that order, but it was wrong. You saying that, for example, politics. APC wants to demonstrate at an NPC petrol station, as an example. Today, today, Twift. Today, 12th February 2024, at 
to have known that that police, that if you don't need police approval. PDP, what demonstrate at NPC petrol station today, 12 February 2024, at 12 noon, they don't need police approval. I told them clash. What happens? So that's why you must get police, police approval. If, if you apply, okay, sorry, APC already applied. Can you shift your own to another day? So in a country where there should be law and order, so it's a food, even in other countries where people are free to get bigger democracy, but they inform the police. So the police, so the police even be there to protect you in case, in case you have an opposing party or something attacks you. So that 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 judgment by that court, it flooded. Because now people think we had we had to indicate police approval. All right, police leave you. If they attack you, yes, sorry, we're not aware. So, they will please approve for any demonstration in the interest of peace. We're not a lawless society. No, we think we are, but we're not. When it comes to elections, when that you mentioned political parties, you know, I think there's a lot of education that, you know, the Nigerian public need to understand how the police work when it comes to elections sometimes you will hear oh there was vote mm. buying in so so and so place but there were security agents and the police was there and nobody did anything the mm. police almost like the police stand and and watch the, the the time when they are supposed to act is not now no we're not they don't come with weapons into the place just so people can understand how that works when it comes to policing and elections yeah i i think uh what, what the, vote, the, the vote buying is not done in public. Even if it's done in public, the Electoral Act, I don't know if I change it to, the Electoral Act, one time, I have a presiding officer who would order police to arrest. Police cannot turn this one. Police has violence. This is violence. The police. Cannot wait for it to be told the act. But even in the little offense, in the prison officer who take police, I read that mic with a little offense. So that is what the law says. I don't ever change it to, but that was when I was there, that's what the law said. So if police is there and they see a letter of be committed, a prison officer responsibility to other police to arrest that person. So that's how that works. Yes. Before we let you go, what should we be doing as a people and also with, in collaboration with the police? What can we be doing with the times that we're in? It is not a usual time. This is not normal living. How should we be conducting ourselves so we don't get ourselves in a situation where they will now devolve <laughs> into yeah. anarchy? Yeah. Now, um, we are in a trying situation. And uh, all hands have to be on deck. Put the citizens and the security agencies, they should collaborate and ensure that adequate security provided for the people. And also, you take care of your security yourself. If you read my book, Overcoming Security Challenges, I'll send a copy to you. You find that most of the Failures. These are true stories. The failures were failures on the part of the citizens themselves. You cannot say, oh, I have, uh, have uh, policemen, security men in my house. Oh, no, no problem. You go home, you just go home, you just you leave your doors, everything open. Uh, I'm, I'm safe. No, you must have uh, protect yourself. Because Heaven help those who protect themselves. You have help do help themselves. You must, you know, as much as the security agencies are there to work for you to protect you, you must also devise ways of giving yourself a protection. So, so what I'm trying to say is that this issue of security for Nigeria, for Nigerians, 
for putting FCT, you do it. The security agencies will assist you, will provide security for you. You, are, you advise them to give the information of what to do to succeed. You call it, do something to protect yourself. That's what you say. Well, there, there's never enough time to talk with you. No, 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 no. Talk about security, you never know. can talk to you tomorrow. I know. But I want to thank you very, very much for making out the time to speak with us on the program today. And good luck with all the work you have ahead of you. I know there's a lot of engagements that you're in right now. I know we're yeah, about I'm, it. I'm, I'm writing a report now. Yes, I know you are. <laughs> but thank well, you. Well, well, I thank God that uh, I'm not there, but I'm busy you now. I'm very busy. Uh, you know, I I think maybe you should update I'm, us. Tell us. I think you're a little busier now. Yes, I'm busier now. Do you know why I say I'm busier, right? As IG, you have a certain type of movement. You wake up at this time, take a bath, go to office, you have some conference meetings to attend, close at certain time, come back at certain time. I don't have time now. I'm, as I'm talking to you, maybe another meeting. Oh, sorry, the meeting will be shifted to tomorrow. I, I see myself. But <laughs> what kind of engagements are taking up your time so much? Is it trainings that you're doing? Yeah, trainings, and uh, I have a lot of NGOs I'm running. And uh, I feel that keeps keep me busy, you know. And uh, it's, 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 it's painful with somebody like me. All uh, from childhood to that age, you're tired, and in the morning, you just sit at nothing to do. So, it's painful. Someone so, is trying to regulate NGOs. Did you hear? Yeah. What do you make of that? Should they regulate NGOs? Of course they should. But a lot of NGOs that do what are not supposed to do. An NGO will still do ABC. They do XYZ instead. It should be regulated. What about social media? Regretted too, because you know, you know, I said the idea of where I say, I say, I don't believe that they need social media, and I said this here because a lot of trash, there, a lot of, a lot of things that I hate, hate language. There, what about free speech? People, some people argue, no, 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 no. the owner of Twitter argues <laughs> that hate speech is free speech, yes, very good, very good. Yeah, I did part of the interview, no? <laughs> Hate speech, eh? What is it? Free speech, yes. Freedom of speech, yes. But have the right to come out. Uh, they have the right to uh, uh, call the name now. They have the right. Free speech. Do I, do I, can I call it something that is ab abusive to you now? I don't want to mention it. Can I call you now? It's free. Well, I'm free to talk what I want to talk. There's a limit to things. In the society, you have law, laws and regulations. There's a limit. So, yeah, yeah, your freedom stops where my own begins. You don't have limited freedom. There's a limit to freedom. Your, free, your freedom stops here. You might start from there. I mean, social media has been very good, especially to the police. Uh, freedom media is very good. We, we've seen the police has used social media so well. And we've seen a lot of discipline come from social media yeah. as well. But where do you draw the line? What is hate speech? Is it when it incites it, it, violence it, it, or when it, it, I don't like it, 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 it or it, when you lie against me or you say something about me that may be true, but I don't agree with it? Where, where do we start drawing the line? You see, the, the fact that... Uh, Unless as an habitant, you tell you, Kayela, what you've done is wrong. You may think he's right. That's the that 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 moderated. You may think he's right. What I did to you, you're convinced what I did to you. You're talking about me. And he said, no, Kayela, what I'm talking about to Kayela is wrong. He's an habitant. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Michael Kiro, for making out the time to speak with us on Political Paradigm. And all the best with all the work you have ahead of you. Thank you very much. I wish I could come here every day. I would love that. I wish I have the time. <laughs> <laughs> we have been speaking with Agune Chamba One of Egbema, former Inspector General of Police, Sir Mike Okiro, please. Let us know your thoughts on today's topic. Join us on channelcv.com. Leave your comments respectfully, of course. We love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Megwa. See you next time.